If you're looking to build an amazing interface so that your team can collaborate better inside of Airtable, look no further than this video. I'm going to be breaking down for the brand new beginner to Airtable in 2024 exactly how you can get interfaces up and running for your team. I'm going to go through all the different core components so that you understand exactly what you're doing when you're deploying your brand new interface. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting and it's our mission to help you get organized and automated with no code. Airtable is one of our favorite no code tools, but there is so much to learn about Airtable. When you first pick it up, it feels simple, but there are a lot of components. So in this video, we're going to be breaking down for you everything you need to know about interfaces. This video is for the beginner, and I want to reiterate that we are filming this in early 2024. Now, that's an important piece of information for you because Airtable is a rapidly evolving software. Things are changing all the time. So if you're watching this video two years from now, you might not have things in the same place on your screen. It might not all be relevant information because the software is constantly improving. So bear that in mind while watching this. But if you are ready to start understanding the core components of interfaces, you're in the right place. All right, before we actually get started, I first want to invite you to join me for some free training. If you want to sign up, this training is completely free at Gap consulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course. And this training will allow you to go through all the core building blocks of Airtable. Interfaces is just a part of that. So if you're new to Airtable and you want to master all of the key pieces, then you're going to love that training. So go ahead and sign up for that. Unsubscribe at any time. No questions asked. That being said, let's go ahead and hop on into my screen and we're going to break this down. I encourage you to follow with me step by step. And for that very purpose, I'm going to be starting with this Airtable template. So if you're new to Airtable, just go ahead and sign into your Airtable account. Come down here to templates and I'm going to be using the project tracker. So if you want to follow along, just go ahead and try this template out, copy it to your workspace and you will have exactly what I have on my screen here. So when you first install this template, you're going to be taken to the back end. This is the database component of Airtable, and this is where all the information is stored. Now, some people love looking at rows and columns. That's me. I'm in this camp. But many people don't like this. And it's really for the other people on your team, not the people who love building databases. It's the people who are using them and don't like looking at spreadsheets. That's where interfaces are going to come into play. But assuming you're watching this video, you are the person who is building the solution inside of your organization. And so you need to understand the back end. So I always start here whenever I'm working with a template or building from scratch. I'm looking at that back end data schema. And it's pretty simple in this case. This is a straightforward template. We have overview here, and this is all of our projects. So we've got five different projects with a status. Each of them has an attachment, project lead, the due date, a kickoff date, all that information. Important to note is that a project links to tasks. So tasks are our next component here, our second table. And our tasks, of course, are things that we're tracking that are components that make up the project. And so here we've got for the project brand refresh and redesign, we have three different tasks. And so we can track the status of these tasks. We can look at subtasks and see if they're marked off or not. Who are these tasks assigned to? Who is the project lead? When is the kickoff for this particular task? And when is it due? We also have things like how many days are being uh, used up here. So it's just a little bit of a formula. And we're also storing documents. And of course, we know that a task links to a project. And so there is the component right there where we're linking things up. So that's the back end. But as I mentioned already, most people don't like looking at rows and columns. So for those people, we want to build the interface. Thankfully, this template already has one interface built. So we're going to start by looking at that. We can click on interfaces here, and it's going to take us out of the data component and put us in the actual interface itself. Now, before we deep dive into this interface, I first want to do a little bit of backstory in terms of how interfaces are organized. So what we can do is click up here at the top and go to edit. And when we do this on the left hand side, this is showing us all the components of our interface. And so there are two layers of an interface. The top layer is an interface, as you see right here. And inside of that, we can add these pages so you can have 
unlimited numbers of pages inside of your interface. So for this particular example, we have one interface that comprises of one page, but I could add multiple pages just by coming here, adding pages, and I could build any kind of interface I want. If I want to do a calendar view, a Kanban, a gallery, and these are just starting points. And of course, I don't have to use them. I can also start with a blank canvas and interfaces are completely drag and drop. So if I started with the blank canvas, I could start adding the different elements of data that I want to the interface and then share it with my team. Now on the topic of sharing, it's important to know that we don't share the page itself. What we share is the interface level. And so sometimes you might wanna share an interface with your marketing team, for example. So you'd need to make sure that all of the pages that are inside of that interface are all relevant for the marketing team. If you wanted to create other interface pages for let's say your finance team, well then you could create another interface. So we can create pages and interfaces and share them interchangeably. But it's important to understand that when we're sharing an interface, we do it at the interface level, not at the page level. So in the example of where I have marketing and finance, I would wanna create another interface here, name this one, and maybe this is my finance interface. Once I've got it picked out, then I can click next, and then I can start creating pages inside of that. So let's just really quickly put this together, and I'll say next, and next, and finance, and say finish. And what I've just done is now added a new interface with a new page. And so I can share this interface, the finance interface, and all the pages here will be shared with finance. And then I can share this interface, assume this is the marketing interface, and it will be shared with everybody on the marketing team. So this is how we can control who sees what and who has access to what interface. All right, now more on the topic of sharing, we can share in the upper right corner right here. And this again is going to share at the interface level. And we can go ahead and invite them by a link and just create a link, or we can just put in their email address and send them that invitation. Now do note that by adding edit access or commenter access to anyone to your interface, it's going to mean that they are going to be paid users on your Airtable account. So whatever Airtable pricing plan you are on, for every user you add to an interface, you will incur a charge every month or every year for that user. You can make the selection right here. Now, if you bring them in as read only, they will not incur charges, provided that you are not adding them to any other part of your Airtable. So editors have the capability of updating information in the interface that you've given them permission to edit. It's important to note that you have to first grant them permission to edit it, because if you don't do that, even if you give them editor access, they won't be able to edit that information. But it's also very important to understand that a user that has interface access does not necessarily get access to the backend database. So if we go back to our actual project, this is where we have our database, and this is where we're looking at the data view. If we share the data view here, we're giving people access to everything under the hood. Whereas in the case where we're sharing an interface, we're not giving them access to all of the data, we're just giving them access to the interface that we've created. So sharing interfaces and building pages for interfaces inside of the interface bubble, it's really important to understand how all these components work together. Now that we have an understanding about how we can share and build interfaces, let's take a look at how we can edit this information. So when we click into the different components here, here I am in my projects in flight, this is the one that came with the template. On the left-hand side, we are selecting a record. And if we highlight this, as we hover over it, you see it's getting this blue outline here. Well, we can click this element, and now on the right-hand side of our screen, we have the different components of that element. So this element is looking at the overview table. If I go back to my data, the overview table is where we had our projects, and there are five different projects in our sample data. But if we go back to the interface, we only see four. The reason for that is we have some limitations to what records are being brought in here. So we can click on what records are visible. And here we see that the status of the records that are showing is not monitoring or complete. So back in our data, we see the five different projects. One of them is marked marketing slash complete. So it does not show up in our interface because we filtered that data out. 
Now, something you definitely want to know with interfaces is that we can also use the user field type when we are bringing in interfaces. And so we can filter information that only shows for specific people logging into Airtable. So for example, we had the project lead. If I go back to this, we see our project lead is these different folks who right now are just fake people from the template. Well, I can actually limit the information that people see in the interface. I can say that the project lead has to be the current user. That means the person who's logged in, right? So I'm logged in as myself. And now that I've applied this filter, nothing is visible on my interface. If I go back into the raw data and I assign myself as the project lead to one of these projects, well, then it is going to appear here on the side. So if I made myself project for two different projects, I now see only the two projects that I am available to see. And we can also preview this interface from the perspective of different users. If I click on preview here, I can then select different users from my team and preview to see what is their experience like when they log in from their interface. This is a really important component, and we get there again from the editor access. So here we are inside of the interface. We have to be in edit mode, but then we can go up and preview as different people in the organization. Of course, those people have to have the interface already shared with them in order for us to be able to preview. Now, the other component of interfaces that you absolutely must leverage is understanding that you can make it available for people to edit the data here. So here I am on the status. If I click on this element, you'll see that by default, it shows up as view only. But maybe I want to allow the members of my team to update the status of these projects over time. All I have to do is click editable. And when I publish these changes, core thing is I have to publish them. If I don't, then it will never launch. But now you see that this certain element is available to be changed. I can totally edit this component now, and that's because of the fact that I did that back on the edit. If I ever need to make changes, by the way, all I have to do is click here again, go back to edit, and then it opens up those core components. Now, the last piece that I want to share with you is that when we have linked relationships, we can give people access to multiple layers of information. So quick pause, let's think about our original data schema. We had projects that connect to tasks. Well, here I am, I can click on my different projects and you'll notice that my tasks are loading here. That's because in this particular case, someone's added that element from our projects. So our projects were called overview. If I click into here, I see all the different components that live inside of our projects. And the person who built this interface in the template has brought these tasks in and they went ahead and added one of these components. But I want to point out that we can add the tasks on a calendar. We can add them on a Kanban. We can bring them in in a list, in a chart. There's so many different ways that we can bring in the related data. And so the big understanding here is that we have a linked relationship from our overview to our tasks. So we find the tasks element inside of the overview we select it, and then we can pick how we want to bring that information in. For example, we might want to see those tasks on a timeline. Let me go ahead and bring the timeline element in and just drop it down here. I can then resize it. And if you ever run out of real estate, know that you can start shrinking some of this stuff down, making it a lot easier for you to see what the actual interface is going to look like. Here that I've brought in this component, I can make it full screen. Let's go ahead and publish this and then view the actual interface itself. So here I am. Yes, I have a list of my tasks right here, but I can also then see them on the timeline now, which gives me different perspective on how things are going with this project. Now, as a last component, I can also click into these tasks, and this is where I'm getting access to the next layer down. In order to see how this was built, we first have to go back to edit mode. So let's go back to our project view here. And I'm going to go into edit here and we're going to drill into these components. I click them once. Fine. And over here on the side, we see that there's permissions here and we've granted the users the ability to open the record details. And we can also customize what they see when they open that record. So here, if I click customize, this is the detail page that is opening up and we can see the information inside of that. 
If we want to grant edit access to these different elements, we can simply by clicking them and making them editable. So here I can update the status, make the status editable, as well as the subtasks. Just that easy, we have now updated our interface. Also want to highlight for you that you can make this a side sheet so that it pops open on the side and it doesn't take up the entire page and you see that it now is just popping open like this. Let's go ahead and publish these changes and once more look at the changes that we've made live. So here I am, I select a project and I can click into the tasks. Let's pick this particular task. I can now edit the information in here. I can update the task status and there we go. All of that is being controlled right from the interface and I'm no longer looking at rows and columns. I know there's a lot to unpack here, interfaces and Airtable are almost like learning an entirely new software. So if you have a question that we didn't quite cover, please be sure to drop it below. In the meantime, keep on building.